Greetings once again, our dear listeners, and I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And this once again, that we are in this quarter where we have the lesson named the Great Controversy. And today, specifically, it is lesson three. And I know that we have learned some good lessons from the previous lesson that has passed. And today we are going to do lesson three, which is entitled The Light Shines in the Darkness. The Alma text is from the book of John, chapter 12, verse 35, where the Bible says, Then Jesus said to them, Then Jesus said to them, A little while longer the light is with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. Who walks in darkness does not know where he is going. May we pray. Loving Father who does in the most time, we thank you very much and we pray that it be our gate. Help us to pick lessons from this lesson as we read and as we study it. In Jesus' name I pray and pray. Amen. Amen. Dear children of God, once again, we come to God and we see that light shines in the darkness and we are looking at the great controversy. And we see that the lesson writer tried to give us a picture in the Bible and he speaks more of the last book which is Revelation where he says that the devil is pictured as a dragon and a serpent. And we see this also in Genesis chapter 3. And we see that he is a dragon because he desires to destroy God's people. And he is a serpent because he uses all cunning lies to deceive them. That's mostly what brings us the picture. And then we see that in the years after Christ's death, thousands were tortured, thrown into lions, and burned at the stake by imperial Rome for refusing to worship its deities. Yet, in the face of this cruel punishment, Many stayed faithful, the gospel continued to spread, and the church grew. That's how those in the past, who lived in the past, how they loved Jesus, how they stayed faithful, that they could do everything that was needed so that they can end up of bringing or leaving a seed that will continue in the faith of Jesus light shining into darkness we see that jesus christ came in and then he has to win the battle which started in heaven and this will help you and this will take us to part sunday that part sunday is entitled compromise satanist sabotage strategy you know compromise is one of the things that has made christians to stumble in most of the things that we are supposed to do compromise comes in many things which we always think that maybe they are not ours and compromise always has taken us away from the way of god and when you read more so in the book of genesis we see a compromise that came in to our grants, that's Adam and Eve. When Eve was told not to leave his had her husband and to go where he is where she was not supposed to go. She went alone, moving in the garden, just where Satan found her, and then she was eventually tempted. And then we see that also Adam came and he ate on the fluid. The same thing happens to the generation that came in during Jesus' ministry. And then we see that these verses that has been given to us in the book of John, chapter 14, verse 16, and John chapter 14, verse, chapter 8, verse 44. And we see that in 14, 
Verse 6, the Bible says, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. In verse 8, chap chapter 8, verse 44, the Bible says, Ye are of your father the devil, and the last of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and a, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Since from the time past, the devil has been a liar, and he is still a liar. And then when Jesus comes to us and tells us that he is the truth, he is the way to the father. There is no way we can reach the father except through Jesus Christ. And we still see this statement, I read it, is from the book of the Great Controversy. Page 51, the writer, the inspired writer says, Satan well knew that the Holy Scriptures would enable men to discern his deceptions and withstand his power. Satan knows very well that the Scriptures would withstand and will be overcome. It was by the word that even the savior of the world had resisted his attacks. At every assault, Christ presented the shield of eternal truth, saying, it is written. To every suggestion of the adversary, he opposed the wisdom and the power of the word in order for Satan to maintain his sway over men and establish the authority of the Pope Asper, he must keep them in ignorance of the scriptures. The Bible would exalt God and praise finite men in sacred truth, must be concealed and suppressed. This logic was adopted by the Roman Church. For hundreds of years, the circulation of the Bible was prohibited. The people were forbidden to read it or to have it in their houses. And unprincipled priests and prelates interpreted its teachings to sustain their pretensions. Thus, the Pope came to be almost universally acknowledged as the vigilante of God on earth, endowed with authority over church and state. Those words, how I pray, they come to us. In fact, man, he says, savage or savage wolves. In here, we pick lessons from the book of Acts. There was a kind of a compromise during Paul's time, and Paul one is about it. The book of Acts chapter 20, verse 27 through 32, the Bible says, For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Take heed therefore unto yourselves, and to all the flock over the, we, over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Therefore, watch and remember that by the space of three years I ceased not to warn every one night and day with tears. And now, brethren, I command you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. You know, they are wolves. 
in the Christian world, as we see. But the warning is that we need to keep ourselves in the word of God. When we go out of the word of God, we shall eventually be taken by the snares of Satan. Savage wolves, very dangerous ones, awaiting us. But they don't use the word of God. If they use it, they twist it so that you can not be able to understand their strategies. And the parts choose the safeguard by the one. You know, in all the generation that has passed, where Christians have stood, where the saints have fought battles, wars, even without not them putting in their energy, that I mean fighting with their own energy, boxing, kicking, or using anything that can be used to fight. Christians have not done that. What they have used, it is the word of God, the sword. Look at John, look at Paul, look at all the people that have come in the generation. The word of God has been their safeguard since day one. And that is where we also see that Jesus also used the Bible. And which is the word of God, and which is infallible. And we see that the word of God, it is the light upon our path as we move. And this word of God is called the blood. When we read in John, and we still see that if we read the word, the word of God, it takes or it makes us to understand of that which is surely needed by our Redeemer or by our God. Safeguarded by the Word of God, it is, in, it is only in the Word of God that we are safeguarded. And here I read just some scriptures in the book of John, chapter 17, verse 15. The Bible says, I pray not that thou shouldest Take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. Verse 16 and 17, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. What a prayer that Jesus Christ prayed for us, that we can be sanctified by the truth of God. And it is a prayer that needs to be taken by each one of us. Acts chapter 20, Acts chapter 20, verse 32, the Bible says, And now, brethren, I, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all of them which are sanctified. What are scriptures? that can help us to be guided in the word, always and always, safeguarded by the word. It is only in the word of God that we are sanctified. Remember, sanctification is a process that every Christian must go through before reaching glorification. But when this day is entitled human reasoning apart from scriptures, there's a question which we need to understand and think of and the question says, why is the human mind without the aid of the Holy Scripture incapable of discovering divine truth? And then to continue to say, discuss the relationship between human reason and divine revelation. How does reason actually help us understand the divine revelation? For example, look at the book, uh, look at Daniel chapter 2, a prophecy that covers world history from the time of Babylon to the second coming of Jesus Christ. How does a prophecy like this powerfully appeal to human reason? My dear friend, there are very many books that have been written commenting on what the Bible says. And this, the lesson has picked Daniel chapter 2. 
But you come to understand that there is also confusing bo books in the Bible, like the book of Revelation. When you read the book of Revelation, chapter 14, verse 1 through 12, which speaks of the three angels. This book, many have interpreted it contrary, and many are being taken by such a doctrine which is very, very, very contrary to what God teaches. My dear friend, when you read in the book of Proverbs, chapter 16, verse 25, the Bible says, There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is the way of death. We see that man always takes a way which we think in our reasoning it is good. But when the God who created us has told us to take another way. In the book of Judges, chapter 21, verse 25, the Bible says, In those days there was no king in Israel. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. When God is not guiding, then people, we tend to do what we want or what comes to us or what we desire. But what is the end? The end is death. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 6, the Bible says, All we, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. That's Jesus Christ. Light shining through darkness with our reasoning, with our brain, with our knowledge, with our everything that we have. Wisdom cannot work in the things of spirituality. That's why you see that there is a statement in the book, The Deserve Ages, spiritual things are discerned spiritually. Never to bring your kind of mind on spiritual things. We always pray to God. That's why we are told to always pray before we read the word of God. Why? We will be led by the Holy Spirit. If we don't read, then we shall be read. Or we shall be led by our own carnal mind. May the good Lord help us that we can be able to understand what he surely desires us to do not what we desire to do. And this will take me to part Thursday. Part Thursday, which is entitled Battle for the Mind. And this has been a battle since Satan was thrown on this earth. You know, when Eve was told to decide whom he will obey, she could not pick them well. Why? Satan came with a sabuto cunning character and he told her that God said in that he got a ground to build on so that he can take up this ground of ours. Now, in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3, through six, I read. The Bible says, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them, for we preach out ourselves. But Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake, for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. 
So as we read, we see that in Second Corinthians chapter 4:4, 4, 4, it speaks of whose minds the gods of this age has been has blinded, who do not believe. The question would come: how are their eyes blinded? How are eyes open? We are only, or oh, our eyes are only opened when God gates. But if the Lord does not guide, then our eyes will surely be blinded. Now, the Greek word for mind in this passage is noema. It literally means our perception of men, our perception or mental faculties. That's in the SBA comment. The, S, the SBA Bible commentary makes an enlightening statement about the verse. It says the battle between Christ and Satan is a battle for the minds of men. Satan's principal work is to blind or darken men's minds. He does this by keeping them from the study of God's word, by deranging the powers of the mind through the excesses of body and soul, by wholly occupying the mind through the things of this life and by appealing to pride and self-exaltation. That is in volume 6, page 854. And we see that this statement says, the lack of knowledge on the part of the lost is not because they could not know. That's not the reason. Many have had every opportunity to know truth, but chose not to believe, and Satan blinded their eyes. Satan's kingdom is a kingdom of darkness. As the Bible commentary adds, the gospel is the only means by which Satan's diabolical schemes and deceptions can be exposed and by which men can see the way from darkness to light. That's volume 6, still page 854. The essence of the New Testament message is the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Jesus is at the heart of the gospel and is the center of the scriptures. All scripture testify of him. We see that only in Jesus Christ that's when or that's where we see the scriptures speaking of him. Actually in the old New Testament death, life and the ministry of Jesus Christ is spoken of. That's why you see that in all the time that I've passed in the book of Acts, coming all to the book of Revelation, and you see that they have been preaching Jesus Christ. That's the disciples. And we ought also to do the same. Battle for the mind. Whenever we compromise of truth, then we shall choose that which is contrary to God. And the light shining through darkness, Jesus Christ came and gave his life for us. He is willing to make us willing in this matter that we are in. He is very willing that he cannot leave us. Why not to take this opportunity to choose Jesus today? And as we read this lesson, you can pick much more lessons when you read it by yourself. But for the few lessons that we have picked, may the good Lord help us. And I will close with this statement in the Book of Great Controversy, page 56 and page 57. And it says, The same spirit of hatred and opposition to the truth has inspired the enemies of God in every age. And the same vigorancy and fidelity have been required in his servants, the words of Christ, 
the first disciples are applicable to his followers to the close of time. What I say unto you, I say and it all. Watch. Jesus tells us to watch. And those words that were spoken to the disciples, the first one, the twelve, they still come to us. May the good Lord help us to watch and always pray for the goodness or for the light to shine through darkness by us. May we pray. Loving Father, who does the most we thank you very much and we pray that we all may lead us in all. We help us understand your word. In Jesus' name I pray and believe. Amen.